I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me if you would, to Exodus chapter 15. And uh, as we turn to Exodus chapter 15, we've been looking at the first recorded song for us in the Word of God. We've seen in the first 12 verses how Israel looks back with rejoicing on what God has done for them, on the deliverance that God has brought to them. Now as we come into verses 13 through 18, we see Israel look ahead and understand what God has done for us in the past, he's going to do for us in the future. He will continue to lead us. He will continue to protect us. He will continue to watch over us. And they understood that simple principle uh, that God didn't bring them this far just to bring them this far. Although it's amazing when you get to the end of this chapter how quickly they forget God's goodness in their life. But we want to see today how they look ahead and understand how God is going to take care of them. It says in Exodus 15, verse 13, Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrel shall take hold on the inhabitants of Palestinia. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of thine arm, they shall be as still as stone. Till thy people pass over, O Lord, till thy people pass over, which thou hast purchased. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thy inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. Not only as we come into these verses, but as we've looked at the first 12 verses in this song, we are reminded of the wonderful truth that any victory was coming as a result of God and God's awesome power. It was not because of the children of Israel. It was God all the way that led them. It was God who protected them. It was God who overthrew the enemy. And any victory that they experienced in their life was a result of the work of God, not a work of themselves. And friends, as we stop and we look at that, we understand that that is very applicable to us today as well, that any victory that we are going to have as a child of God does not come because we are strong spiritually or we can handle it ourselves, any victory comes because we acknowledge our weakness and we acknowledge the fact that we need God working. And that it's his strength, it's his mercy, it's his guidance, and we must look to him for everything. And the sooner that we learn that in the Christian life, the better off we are. And as we come into verse 13 here, the children of Israel are looking ahead and they state that God will lead them to their habitation, that God is going to lead them to the place that they are going to dwell. But notice how the emphasis through all of this, as I've said, is on God and not on the people. And uh, it says in verse 13, Thou in thy mercy hast led forth thy people, which thou hast redeemed. So they not only acknowledged that it was God that did it, but they said that God led them in his mercy. And uh, so they did not deserve this. Uh, you know, they deserved the, the judgment, the condemnation of God. They deserved to be back in, in uh, Egypt under captivity. But God in his mercy led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. And God didn't deliver them out of Egypt to to watch them all die at the Red Sea. And how many times we get that mentality as the people of God, that we think that God is capable of saving us from the eternal consequences of our sin and eternal hell, but yet we think that we can't trust him with our daily lives, that we can't trust him to provide and to guide and to protect in our lives. How foolish we are to think that we can trust him with our eternal destiny, but that we can't trust him with the here and now. And he says, Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. And then he goes on to say, not only had, uh, with the mercies he led them forth, but he says, Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. 
Once again, it is God's strength that he's leading him forth in. But notice, it is God that is guiding them every step of the way. He is the one that is leading. He is the one that is guiding. He is the one that they are looking to and that they need to be looking to in their lives. And not only did the people of Israel acknowledge this, but the people in and around Canaan acknowledged this as well, and they were filled with fear because they saw how God was working on behalf of the children of Israel. Notice what it says in verse 14. The people shall hear. That's speaking of the, the people that live in the land that they're going to inhabit. The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of Palestinia. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of thine arm, they shall be as still as a stone. Till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. You say, is that really the way it worked? Were they really filled with fear? Well, Let's look at their own testimony. Come with me, if you would, to Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2. And uh, here, they, here they are, they're sending spies into Jericho. And let's listen to the testimony of Rahab as these spies come to Jericho and they come to her house. It says in Joshua chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Keep in mind, this is not what Israel is saying. This is what the inhabitants of Jericho are saying. It says, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. Notice this. Here's the reason why. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above, and in the earth beneath. Notice it wasn't necessarily the people of Israel that they feared. It was the God of the people of Israel that they feared. And the, the inhabitants of the land that they are taking over are filled with fear because of God and because of God's awesome power. And they're seeing what God is doing as he's leading them out of the land of Egypt. Now notice in verse 17, the people brought, are brought in and planted there. It says in, ver, in Exodus 15, 17, Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thy inheritance. It talks about it, it being a place of permanence, a place that God was going to establish them. And even in this, they acknowledge that it is God that is the one that is doing the establishing. It says, Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thy inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. Notice, as we've said, as we move through this song, that it is all about God, and it has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with the nation of Israel. And then we see the eternal position of the God of Israel. It says, Thou shalt reign forever and ever. Friends, it does us well to remember today that no matter what we face, no matter how crazy this world seems, it does us well to remember that our God is a sovereign God, that our God is in control. And when you, when you understand what's happening in our world today, in light of what the world of, Word of God says, it becomes very clear that our world is not falling into, into pieces. Actually, our world is falling into place. Everything that God has said is going to happen, is happening. And we can rest assured that everything that God has said will happen, will happen. And child of God, we need to live lives that are close to God in this day and age that we live in, that we might be all that he wants us to be, and that we might have the strength to follow him in this world. And praise God, one day he's coming back for his own. He's going to 
judge this world during the millennial, during the tribulation period, and then he will rule and reign in righteousness for a thousand years upon this earth. Again, the Bible says that he will make a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. The eternal position of our God is he is sovereign and he's in control. We have nothing to fret, nothing to fear. Our God is in control. Have a great day.